Audiences are one of my favorite parts of PPC advertising. They allow us to start to segment user groups out from our regular campaigns and speak to them differently. In some instances, you can customize ad copy, change landing pages, or in other areas, you can just adjust bids because one group of users performs differently than another. So in recent years, both Microsoft and Google have launched in-market audiences for search campaigns, and they operate a little bit differently than what we would use them for in display campaigns. So today what I want to talk about are what in-market audiences are in the first place, how we can add them to our campaigns in the Google Ads interface, and then my personal approach of how I use in-market audiences in search. So let's hop in. So if we jump into the help section of Google Ads, basically in-market audiences are defined as users who are researching products and actively considering buying a service or product. Both in Google Ads and Microsoft Ads, they've effectively just analyzed the patterns of users on the web based on their different platforms and based on people's searches, the different websites they go to, all that sort of thing. They've curated these lists of in-market audiences based on the different product or service that they're researching searching. When we actually hop into the campaigns, there will be a predefined list of these in-market audiences we can choose from. So let's go ahead and hop in and see what it looks like in the Google Ads interface. So in Google Ads, I just clicked on the campaign that I wanted to change, and then I headed down over into the Audiences tab. You can see that there are no audiences here, so you can either click the Add Audiences button or this blue pencil up here. And the first thing that'll pop up is the add to section in here. So we can add in market audiences to a campaign or an ad group within a campaign. For the purpose of the video, I'm just gonna add it to campaign level, but this is really up to you, whatever makes the most sense. The next piece is where we choose how specific we want our campaigns to be. This is going to default to observation and the other option is targeting. So for your search campaigns, I'm almost always going to suggest using an observation layer because what this does is it still lets everybody on the web search for your keywords, be included in your campaign, but then it will break out a different line item for each of the in-market audiences you have. So you can see that performance data against the regular campaign as a whole. The targeting option will effectively limit your campaign to only show for users who are in that in-market audience. And unless you have a really specific use case for it, which there easily could be, um, you probably won't want to do this because you'll be limiting your campaign to only showing to that group of people who's technically in that in-market audience and everybody who's outside of that will not be part of it. So for the purpose of today, I would suggest using just an observation layer for all of these in-market audiences. If we scroll down a little bit, we can then see the list of audiences that we're able to use for the campaign. There's a number of different ones that show up here. You can see website visitors, in-market audiences, all this sort of thing, recently used audiences. What I want to do is go to browse and you'll find the in-market audiences down here and what are they actively researching or planning? And then it'll have in-market in parentheses so you can see that affinity and custom affinity, remarketing audiences, all this sort of thing is also in here. So let's just click in-market. And now you'll see this list of predefined audiences that I talked about earlier. So if you're looking for business services, you can click this drop down and there'll be different subsets in here of different things. Each one of these little arrows down says that there's a subcategory that you can choose here. If you were to choose business services, it's only going to choose the business services group and add it to the right hand side. It's not really going to choose all these individual pieces. These users will likely still be included in this business service services group, but you won't see the different data layers for each of the subsequent groups down here. So if you wanted to target all business services groups, I would then suggest you also click everything down below here because you'll then be targeting each of these different groups individually and you'll also be able to see the performance for each of them differently. Each one of these, business technology, enterprise software, CRM solutions, will all have a different line item we get to the final report and I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. But for sake of this video, let's just say that I don't want any of these and this account is actually targeting for people who are looking for home decor. We can scroll down and see where these different pieces might be. So let's go into home and garden. Now we can see that we've got home and garden services, appliances, home decor, and furnishing. So these are probably the most likely fits for what we're going to want for this account. So I'm going to open these up and see what's here. Each of these pieces doesn't really fit what we're looking for. So I'm going to close home decor 
and actually look at furnishings. And this is a little bit closer to what we want. So we're actually looking for kitchen and dining room and living room. And then I'm also gonna choose the kitchen and dining room tables. That way we've got a subset of performance here. Now that I've got the in-market audiences chosen that I want, just come down here and click save. And you'll see that they're applied to the campaign in the audiences tab where we started in the first place. So it's going to show you what type of audience it is, what ad group it's applied to. This is blank because we applied it to the campaign level, which it then tells you over here in this level column. But you'll see some other columns in here as well. So now we'll be able to see the clicks, impressions, all of the different performance metrics for these audiences individually. And then it'll also show you other audiences. So basically anything you don't have filtered in here and the total campaign. So since these haven't run for very long and these audiences haven't been active in this campaign, there's no data for it. So you can't have past data accrued in these. They start accruing data from the date that you add them to the campaigns. So it's pretty easy to add in-market audiences to your search campaigns. So the last thing I wanna do is talk about my personal approach to in-market audiences. In the last section, we talked about adding the ones that made sense for that business, kitchen, dining room, tables, home furnishings, all that good stuff. But if you really stop and think about it, why would you only add those? Why would you only add people who are in market for something if you're adding them as an observation layer? There could be people who are in market for lots of other things that are also still searching for kitchen and dining room tables that want to come into your campaigns and that you can optimize on them separately. So what I personally do is I actually add literally every single in market audience that's available to me. So let's hop into an account and I can kind of talk you through what my logic is and why we do it this way and what I think the benefits are. So let's look at an account I've already got set up. So I've got everything filtered to look at just in-market audiences here, and we can start to see all of the different groups that I have available. So travel, software, education, consumer electronics. This account is actually targeting a B2B software as a service piece, but we can see that the most cost for the date range that I have selected goes to travel. And then trips by destination, financial services, education, auto and vehicle, all this stuff that has nothing to do with it. But the best part is we have lots of different data points that we can see how somebody who is in market for autos and vehicles performs different from people who are in market for education or financial services. The CPA between those is quite different. You'll have to excuse what the actual bid adjustments are. They are based on different data than what is currently showing. They're not as accurate as they could be, but you can start to see how this is really impactful. I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom where we can see the total filtered audiences. So all in-market audiences make up for 53,000, almost 54,000 in spend of the 99,000 in spend for this campaign for this date range. That's over half. And now we can optimize based on these different data points, just get a little bit more granular and say that this one has a $90 CPA, whereas this one has a $40 CPA. So we could easily decrease the bid adjustment for new motor vehicles down to something that's maybe minus 10, minus 20. And maybe we increase the bid for hotels and accommodations because that's performing just that much better. And if you come down here at the bottom, you can see that I actually have 651 audiences assigned to this campaign. All this does is gives me 651 more data points to optimize on compared to having no or only a handful of in-market audiences, only the ones that actually make sense for this business. It might seem like overkill, but honestly, it's really nice to be able to come in every couple of weeks, every month, every three months, depending on how much volume you're getting, and optimize based on the performance at the audience level, as opposed to just keyword, ad copy, all of the different other things you're optimizing. Now you can add audiences to that mix and start to optimize just a little bit more based on the performances you're seeing from all the different audiences. Thanks for watching our video. Make sure to subscribe to the Paid Media Pros channel to see more videos. 